Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking our wooden floor material from the last video and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived in feel. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the files we'll be needing during this video. We're going to need floor smudges type A medium 001, which is a bit of a mouthful, and also uh, gun scratches 003, both of which I already have saved to my hard drive and I'll be including links to them below the video. Okay, let's head over to Maya. Okay, so here's where we left off from last time. If you'll remember, the material converted the majority of the work for us. It brought in all the textures and sorted out the, the node layout uh, and whatnot. Um, all we did was make a minor adjustment to the gloss map to lessen its effect on our finished material. Uh, and that was pretty much it. Um, in this video, we're going to be getting a little bit more in depth. We're going to be working with these nodes um, to add in our surface imperfections. Before we get started, I just want to go into a little bit more detail about what it is we're about to do. We're going to be taking our original roughness map where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny. Um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, they'll, they'll be the reflections would be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so let's get started on our nodes. Now, um, Maya, when you uh, load up a material, um, it tends to move the nodes all about uh, to try and make them neat and tidy which can be handy but <laughs> I'd prefer it if it didn't but hey ho um, let's just make a little bit of room for ourselves and try and neaten things up a little bit because this, this is the area we need to work on we're going to be affecting our gloss map or what is effectively a roughness map um, after it's been inverted uh, so I'm creating a little bit of room around that for us to work and then I'll zoom in a little okay so just, I'm just going to quickly explain what these three nodes are doing because um, it will play a part in in what we're about to do. Uh, this is the uh, texture map, this is the, the, the gloss map from uh, polygon.com which is being inverted to turn it into a roughness map. That's being fed into this color correction node which if you'll remember we used the multiply value of that to uh, adjust the effect it's having on our map. You'll see the interactive render there is changing as I move it. Um, that was kind of the default map and then going back here made it super reflective like a mirror and we decided on a value of about there in the end. Um, so that's what that node's doing. This one, um, with Maya you have to bear in mind the, the types of inputs that particular nodes are looking for. Now the um, roughness value or the specular roughness value in our shader is expecting a float value, a, a grayscale image, whereas our map is a, an RGB image uh, and what this is doing is converting that um, so the shader will accept it. So the area that we're going to be working on is in between these two nodes. Yeah. So after the gloss map's been, or the roughness map's been adjusted, but before the conversion takes place. Okay, so let's bring in a um, our texture, yeah. So I'm going to type an image into the create box down here, and it's this AI image. That, uh, all of the Arnold related nodes uh, have AI uh, at the beginning, so it's an Arnold image that I'm bringing in. And I'll just name this Smudges. And then under image name, we'll get to find our material. Now it's floor smudges type A medium 001, 4K version that I've got and I'll bring in the 16-bit version of it um, with, uh, I think I mentioned in the last video, with 16-bit you get a, a higher color depth and basically get more detail from the texture and that's what we want so I'm going to take that. With that loaded in I'm going to change the color space to raw. Now as a general rule any texture that affects the um, color of a texture such as obviously the color map but also the reflection map um, you'd want to leave that on sRGB 
you want Arnold to apply any of the gamma corrections that it's going to apply to those textures. But for textures that don't influence color, like gloss maps, roughness maps, displacement, etc., um, you don't want the gamma corrections to be applied. And so if you set this to raw, we're going to get the, the raw data from that texture, and that's exactly what we want. So with that in place, the next thing to do is to give ourselves a way of introducing this map into our roughness map. Yeah. Now the way we're going to do that is via a composite, um, the Arnold one, <laughs> AI composite node, and I'm going to name this Smudges Add because this is going to be adding in the smudges to our roughness map. So. I think it's important to try and name the nodes so you can so you can make some sort of sense of them when you go back to them later. Um, especially since Arnold has a also uh, Maya has a habit of rearranging the nodes. Um, if you don't give them good naming, you're going to come back to it a week from now and not have a clue what any of them do, even though it was you that made them. Anyway, I'm going to feed in our roughness map from uh, there into the top input and our smudges map into the bottom one and then I'm going to feed the output color into this to float node, the one that turns it into a grayscale image that will make sense to uh, to the shader. And then with that done we've got some various options as to what um, what sort of mix types we can use. Now we want to use screen like so. And you'll see as I do that, you can start to see the smudges appear. Now, if you're wondering what, what screen does, um, it's very similar to uh, multiply, uh, which we covered in the last video. But what screen does is it inverts the input prior to doing anything. It then multiplies it, and then it inverts it back. So it's kind of like, uh, in this case, it's, it's taking our roughness map, turning it back into a gloss map, doing a multiply on it um, based on the the smudges texture and then inverting it back but that, that's just how screen works that's the, the easiest way to to explain it um, so we'll be able to control uh, the effect of our smudges um, we, we, we could do it from directly from this smudges texture because we do have a multiply value and we could bring that down but what I'm going to do actually is, is follow on from what we have been doing. Uh, I'm going to name this first of all, which I probably should have done in the last video, our rough, I call it roughness adjust, like so, and then I'm going to duplicate that node, Ooh, I don't want that and that though, um, and I'm going to call this smudges adjust. So now we have the same sort of setup that we had before, and now this multiply value within the smudges adjust will give us our control. Uh, because I copy and pasted it, this invert is ticked. We don't want that, so I'll turn that off. And now you'll see, with the multiply value right down at zero, we get no smudges whatsoever. And if we whack that all the way up to one, that's kind of the, the maximum effect we would want. Uh, and that's too, that's too strong, as you can see. We, we want this to be a subtle effect. It's just to give the impression of use. Uh, we don't want it to, to look dirty. So I'm going to bring that down to a value of about 60%. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll work well for us. OK, so the next step is to add in our scratches. Now, that's obviously going to be affecting the normal map. And we actually have that down the bottom here. If my mouse will stop being silly. There we go. Uh, so this is the normal map. Uh, to break down what these nodes are doing, uh, much like I did before, we have our normal map here. This is... I don't even know what this is doing. I don't know why it needs to be there, to be honest. Is it inverting a green channel? Do we even need it? I don't know. I don't think we do, to be honest. But the converter has brought it in, so we'll leave it as is. Um, so this is our normal map, and this is the normal map node, the one that's taking the, the texture, turning it into height information uh, and that's being fed into the normal input of our shader. So where we'll be working is actually just after this. Um, we want to, we're going to bring in a bump node, connect our normal map to it so that normal information is still being used um, and then bring in our scratches texture to add to that height information. Yeah. So let's start off with the texture. I'm going to go to image again, AI image, there we go. And we'll name this one Scratches, like so. 
And next we need a... Well, you need to bring the file in, that would probably help, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, gum scratches 03. There we go. There's a bunch of different ones you can choose from with gun scratches. I'm going to use the same we did before, the 16-bit the overlay. And load that in. And then, again, change sRGB to raw. So we get no color corrections applied. And then, I'm going to bring in one of these nodes that we that I mentioned up here, the, the to float. Yeah? Because we need uh, to turn this color image into a grayscale float image. So I'll just type in float, and you've got color to float. There we go. So I'll drop that in there, and now we have that the, the values from the scratches as a as a float, um, which is required in this instance. And then next we want to bring in a Arnold bump 2D node. Yeah, AI bump 2D, and we'll call this scratches add, because this is the part where the scratches will get added. Now, this bit's a bit strange because we don't have all of the inputs showing here, do we? No, that's kind of annoying. There's nowhere to actually plug in the normal map when, when you look at it first. Um, but if you were to grab the output value of our normal map and drag it into this top note, this little bit at the top that hasn't got any writing on it, and then click other, you can then choose the normal. Um, I'm not quite sure why it's done like that, but it is. So uh, we'll just have to deal with that. Um, I thought I renamed this already. Let me try that again. Weird. But hey, it's working now. And then if I feed this into our normal input of the shader, we're still getting our normal values feeding through that node, but now we have somewhere to plug in our bump map. Yeah? But as you'll see, um, the scratches is looking for a green input a float input and that's why we put in that that little conversion node there so if i feed that into the bump map like so give it a second to wake up and we'll start to see our scratches appearing on our floor two very obvious uh issues though first of all the scratches are bumping the wrong way uh, hopefully you can tell from the video there but they're, they're bumping out of the floor uh, we want them to be cutting into the floor uh, that is easy to do though. Basically all we're going to do is set this to a negative value. So if I go minus one for example, <laughs> it's a very extreme case of bumping, but now the because the, it's a negative value it's bumping into the floor uh, and to get the, the strength right we just obviously just need to lower the, the amount we're using. So I think a value of about 0 0.05 or negative I should say 0 0.05 should be okay. Even that's a bit strong, maybe 0 0.02. Minus 0 0.02 that should work just fine. What we do need to do, however, is affect the scaling. So for that, I'm going to need a texture coordinate. Um, what does that come under? I'll tell you what, I'll just duplicate the node up here. And we'll borrow that. <laughs> So we'll plug in the UV coordinates like so. And then we can adjust the scaling from here. So I'll just rename that uh, scratches scale like so. And then we'll change this tiling value up to something like three. Probably should give us a quite a nice result. Yep, that's about right though again definitely too strong um, actually maybe, maybe a value of about 2.5 there we go and now under the uh, scratches sorry the, uh, the scratches addition I'm actually going to lower this value all the way down to 0 0.005 or negative 0 0.005 and that should be a nice sort of subtle effect yeah that's looking good okay at this point just so I can get a closer look at this I'm going to stop that uh, interactive render and close down these nodes and then I'm going to go into the settings up the resolution a little bit and uh, do, a, do a final render as it were. So I'll pause the recording while that's running. 
Okay, so there's our finished render. Uh, not looking too bad. I'd, I'd definitely make some adjustments. The scratches are still a little bit strong. <laughs> I'd probably turn that down even further. Uh, and we also have still slightly too much of that smudges effect, so I'd lower that a bit as well. But certainly for the purposes of a tutorial, I think that uh, that about does the job. So in summary, we've taken our uh, original wooden floor material from the last video and added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic lived-in feel.